It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 233. I'm here to bring you a gift. Here to bring you the gift of boldness. Boldness for what? Boldness to believe. Boldness to believe that Jesus loves you and cares about you. And boldness to receive what he's done for you, the free gift. Not religion, but a rescue. I'm talking to two of you. Those of you that have already been born again, been saved by grace through faith, and those of you that are about to be, I'm here to give you that bring you the gift of boldness. The Lord gave me a motto years ago, bringing boldness to the body of Christ. And the word says the righteous, Proverbs 28, 1, the righteous are bold as a lion. So it's kind of a misnomer kind of a misspeak but so many believers operate in fear more than they do in faith so I'm here to help you I don't care if you're on your fifth beer got your arm around some girl you ain't married to and and I ain't condoning that but I'm just saying if you grab hold of what I'm saying it can help you you know, the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence, but uh, like one fella told me, you got to mow the grass on that side too, and it can lead to a whole lot of trouble. But that ain't what I'm, I'm here to bring you boldness to believe and trust God and keep you out of messes. You know, the bumper on the car has got a tag that says Jesus is the answer. No, he is not. Knowing Jesus is the answer. Oh yeah, I mean, you get born again, you go to heaven. But living the rest of this life on earth, if you hang out with Jesus, He can help you live it. And help you live in victory. Instead of depression and defeat. And discouragement. And suicide. And wanting to give up. He can help you walk around with victory. I want to share with you, I've been talking about the different miracles listed in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I'm going to talk to you about the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. You know, most folks, they want to run the mother-in-law off and to speak very low of the mother-in-law, but Jesus thought enough of her and loved her enough to heal her so she could get up and help cook. (laughs) Thank God when the cook ain't feeling good, ain't nobody feeling good. Cause we, need to, we need to cook feeling real good. Isn't that right? <laughs> but I want to encourage you this morning during prayer. We had a glorious time. We start this morning. I was on about 427, 428. And I know you think I'm an idiot. I think I think people who who sleep all the time and watch TV all the time. I've been that person. I I think people who operate in in doubt and unbelief and don't trust the Lord and are not bold in the Lord, you know, people call me a Jesus freak because I, you know, I I just went whole hog for him. Jesus ain't got no freaks. I'm normal to Jesus. Anybody that would reject so great a salvation and die and go to hell for eternity... To be ruined for eternity, to be be separated from God for eternity, that's kind of freaky. In fact, that's extremely freaky. What you don't see with your natural eyes is more real than what you see. You see this tree behind me. The realm of the Spirit is more real than that tree. The tree was formed out of the words that came out of God's mouth. He created this earth with the words out of his mouth. That's the reason the word of God, the Bible, is so important. I know people can take it and kill you with it. But if you meditate in it, 
You can bring you life. So the answer is not Jesus. <clears throat> the answer is hanging around him and getting to know him. It's sad to say, I, I, this is, I'm, this is, I'm in my 42nd year now. And I've counseled pastors and pastors' wives as couples behind the scenes 2 o'clock in the morning, many a time. And the trouble always was the prayer life was in the crapper. And many believers, their prayer life's in the crapper. It's amazing the people that want to correct me and tell me where I'm wrong. And I start asking them about their prayer life. They ain't got one. And so your criticism and your great expert wisdom goes in one ear and out the other with me. But if you're somebody that genuinely prays and spends time with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost who lives on the inside of you as a believer, you have my undivided attention. I want to hear what you got to say. See, in the secular world, people do a lot of listening to your problems. But in the spiritual world, you ought to hush and listen to somebody that's had some success spiritually. Because spiritual things far outweigh natural things. The supernatural far outweighs the natural. And... uh so many of my friends, churches I've spoken in, have have backed away from Holy Spirit and treating him like some excluded red-headed stepchild that nobody wants to fool with. That's how Holy Spirit's being treated in so many of these churches. That's cowardly. It's it's being a traitor. Luke eighteen one says men, women, boys and girls ought always to pray. And not turn cowards from prayer. Oh, yes, it does. So let me read you. There's three instances for this same miracle. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we'll read each one in the Passion Translation. Get your King Jimmy out if that's what you got to have. Or your NIV or the Yo Mama version. Translation and read along with me. This is eight Matthew eight fourteen through twenty two. Then Jesus went into Peter's home and found Peter's mother in law bedridden, severely ill with a fever. The moment Jesus touched her hand, whoo, she was healed. Now listen to this. Immediately she got up and began to make dinner for him. Boy, I like that kind of miracle. Especially if I was traveling with Jesus and my stomach was growling. I want to cook up healed and moving. That evening, the people brought to him, to Jesus, many who were demonized. And by Jesus only speaking a word of healing over them, they were totally set free from their torment, and everyone who was sick received their healing. In doing this, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. He put upon himself our weaknesses, and he carried away our diseases and made us well. At the sight of large crowds gathering around him, Jesus gave orders to his disciples to get ready to sail back over to the other side of the lake. Just then, a religious scholar approached him and said, Teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no true home in this world. Then another man spoke up and said, Lord, I'll follow you, but first... I must take care of my aged father and bury him when he dies. Uh oh. But Jesus said to him, Now is the time to follow me. Woo! You know, the word Hebrews 11 1 says, Now faith is, or you could say faith is now, backwards or forwards. Either way you say it, faith is right now. But Jesus said, Now is the time to follow me. And let those who are dead bury their own dead. One of my, uh, out of my 
three best friends, one of them died. And uh, they called me, wanted to know if I was going to be at the funeral. And the other best friend of this guy, they wanted to know if he's going to be at the funeral. Well, I had a crusade uh, meeting scheduled in Northern Virginia near Washington, D.C. And uh, I just told him, I said, I've got to do what Jesus wants me to do. And of course, my friend Joe, he in the heaven, he just a dancing, so happy to be out of his flesh body. He, he ain't concerned about whether David Dixon is at his funeral. He's like, go, boy. He a rah, rah, rippy, rippy. That boy from Madison, Mississippi, send him out there with the anointing and get some people born again. Get going, boy. That's what Joe was a saying. I know that from the word. I know I know that because I see what's important to Jesus. Oh boy, we place such importance upon upon religious tradition that has no power. The word says that your tradition has made the word of God of none effect. Woo! I, I, I got you know when people want to get real spiritual and call me dear brother brother David I know they're just being religious cause they don't, don't nobody that knows me ever call me brother David that was used one time in the New Testament when they called Paul brother and people have made a religion out of it it sounds so spiritual it sounds so spiritual to talk about prayer and it's rarely done out of desperation I called two friends up, and I said, come on by at noon. I'll fix you a sandwich. One of them, uh, dogwood sandwiches, dagwood sandwiches. I mean, it's like a, you just stack stuff on in this man. I had them some chips and a RC cola and a moon pie. And it lasted about three days. And when I got them to come over here to feed them, to get them to pray with me. Then a friend of mine whose uh, kids were kidnapped, We got I, I had a recumbent trike two wheels in the front and one in the back and I, I leave here at 3 30 in the morning and do a two-hour trip i'd get off that thing and my whole body legs would be shaking they're the best shape i've ever been in in my life and uh i'd get on the phone if i come five o'clock i hid my earbuds in and i get on the phone with my friend and pray and we pray in tongues mainly because the word says you know not how to pray as you as you ought romans 8 26 so uh but said the Spirit himself. And the King James says the Spirit itself, but that's wrong because the Holy Spirit's not an it. He's a he. He's part of the, the Trinity. He's part of the Godhead. So don't refer to him as an it. Hello. Well, you say, I use King James Version, no other version. Yeah, that one came along 1,611 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. whoop de doo Get your concordance out and start running the words and dig deep and study. Meditate in the word and find out a thing or two. So we on the phone at 5 o'clock morning after morning after morning after morning after morning for three and a half years. And, 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 and finally the day came, my friend called and said, guess what, guess what, guess what, I said what? We didn't think the day was ever going to come. Three and a half years, five o'clock in the morning, morning after morning. We'd do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some weeks we did five, five days. Some weeks we did seven days. And we'd pray in tongues a lot because we didn't know how to pray as we should. Isn't it amazing how speaking in tongues is so ridiculed? Oh, no, 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 we don't have that in our church. Yeah, you control your church. God ain't in control of your church. Watch oh, really night when when I'm out and about. I don't preach to everybody I see. I keep my pearls around my neck. I have this beautiful set of spiritual pearls around my neck. Really not kid around so much. I ain't gonna get serious. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lose my joy over all the calamity going on in the world. People die every day. That's a commonplace thing. I just just believe in God. They they got born again to have a good funeral home director. <laughs> you know, those old 
rock and roll song, I think it was John Prine. He said, please don't bury me down in that cold, cold ground. I'd rather have them cut me up and pass me all around. <laughs> it was a crazy song. But I want to tell you something, what happened to your body, it don't matter. People fuss over being cremated or put in the ground. It's going back to the dust. What about all those folks that got burned up during the war? They didn't get buried. They never found their body. What about those people? Hey, if you're born again, your spirit goes to heaven. Born again, saved. Saved by grace through faith. Receiving Jesus all mean the same thing. But I mean, finally, David called me up. He said, okay, guess what, guess what? Just talk to the FBI. They just, Interpol, International Police in London, England, just called and said, we watched your kids get on a jet in London and we have agents on the ground at DFW Airport. And the, 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 the culprit was arrested. He went through hell. He was fired from his job at the hospital. His, wife, his new wife was fired from the job at, at the hospital, the big hospital, because those people, the, the experts in charge, believed the lies against my friend. Ministers, <clears throat> big name ministers that, that I knew personally said, well, now, keep me posted. I don't want this to hurt my relationship with these other big name ministers. I'm talking about my friend. Because so many lies were told on him. Ugly, ugly lies. But every morning, every morning, every morning, five o'clock, five o'clock, feelings, oh, feelings felt like hell. Oh, oh, but the day came. And my friend received his kids and got full custody of his kids. Hope you're listening to me. And he was totally vindicated. And the one church that I was with, that the pastor was too chicken, and actually he's a leader over this minister. He was too chicken to get involved. I no longer attend that church. Now, am I full of hatred and bitterness about it? No. I'm going to tell you something. Have a backbone. And have a prayer life. Oh, I, hundreds of thousands and millions and millions of dollars have been spent on natural things to help people. I got a young man just got off prayer with me a few minutes ago. He'd been through every every expert and everything under the sun to get off the drugs and stuff. You know what's keeping him off drugs? Every morning he's got his earbud in the ear. He's got five kids. He's got a wife. He's got an, an old, aged couple lives with him. He's he's on every morning. He's got a backbone. And he'll tell you, he told me again yesterday morning, said, David, this is what's keeping me off of drugs. He's now a youth pastor. Do, doing good. Doing good. So proud of him. Yeah. Yeah, you can mock me and ridicule me, but go ahead and die, fool. Go ahead and die and then come back and talk to me like I'm a fool. Go ahead and die and come back and call me a fool. I dare you. I wouldn't fool I wouldn't fool with this. No pun intended. I wouldn't be out here. I got a fire going right here. Keep my bow hunkers warm. It ain't eleven degrees, but it was just a few days ago. It was eleven degrees here. That wasn't the chill factor, that was eleven degrees. I'm going to tell you something. I'm having more fun. And healing is still for today. Jesus says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you go to a church that used to speak in tongues, and they just sweet, and, and the pastor is such a great orator, and they dress, they're not in the 80s anymore. They're up to 2023. They got everything looks so good, the music, everything so spectacular and wonderful. But there's no power. That ain't Bible. That ain't Jesus. Oh, thank God if you're getting people born again. I'm thank God. Paul said, I'm glad if people are getting saved out of contention. I rejoice. But I tell you something, there are too many people backed away from the Holy Spirit. I ain't gonna do it. You can call me an idiot all day long. 
But the Bible way, Mark chapter 16 way, is them that believe shall cast out demons, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I've seen a bunch of people get healed. Well, David, how come you ain't cleaning out the hospitals? I've seen people get healed in hospitals. I've seen mighty miraculous things happen in hospitals. But I tell you what, there has to be a hunger there, a desire. So I just go where people are hungry for what I got. And I have for fun otherwise. I helped a guy. He, he must have said the F word 27 times. I helped him. He got a 10-point buck on the place the other day. Never killed a deer before. And he te- and I, did, I didn't preach at him. I didn't beat him up, but I did minister to him. And I didn't jump on him about his cussing. He needed to get born again. Get the life of God on the inside of him. He wrote me the longest text. Had his little nine-year-old daughter send me a, a video. Thank you, David Dixon, for getting my daddy a book, you know. But I just, just did it because it was in my heart to do it, and I was led to do it. But just listen to me real strong. I looked at him through the eyes of Jesus. I didn't look at him saying the F word every other breath. He got somebody. He has some people praying for him. So who am I going to jump on him for saying the F word? My grandkids told him, Mama said, Bub said the F word the other day. They were like, ah. And, he, and finally, she, and before, he could, she, before they, any the, anybody else could say anything, my grandson said, he said fat, Mama. Everybody's like, Whew. <laughs> Oh, boy. Life's fun, ain't it? Don't be so dang I'm serious. This morning prayer came up. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. I got a river of life flowing out of me. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well. Oh, we, uh, we, we just went off singing that this morning and speaking. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. Woo. I'm out here, I got my running shorts on and flip-flops with no socks and got this all in my legs and getting cold, but I'm fine. <laughs> it's so much fun being out here and I got the light. Sun, beautiful, hardly few clouds, beautiful morning. Deer season's on. People say, I can't believe you ain't deer hunting. No, I thank God I ain't. I'm getting a rest. <laughs> But I ain't even hunted this year. But listen to me really strong. Jesus loves you and cares about you. He he died. He, he, he took his blood into the Holy of Holies for you. So don't neglect so great a salvation. How do you receive? Say this. Say Jesus is Lord. Say I choose to believe. Jesus you died for me. And I believe God you raised Jesus from the dead. Well, the Bible says if you do that, you're saved. Period. I'll be right back in just a moment. Back again. And you want to say in closing, this guy that got his first book. And <laughs> you know, I used to think you ought to jump on people when they're cussing and stuff. But I learned this. If I can get somebody born again, they get the helper on the inside of them. His name's Holy Spirit. And some people, you got, ooh, you need to close the deal and lead them to the Lord right there on the spot. And some people, you got to plant some seed. And I just plant and seed. And I wish you could read the text I got from him after he got all the way back down to Miami. Twelve hour drive. He said, I really learned so much from you, David. And, and more than just deer hunting. But I learned about, the, more importantly, about the things of God. And and uh just you know we're as believers we're to be a light being that interesting i just said that and the lights just suns just popped over the trees as i said that and just hit me in the face it's really that's my favorite time to share is early in the morning when the light's coming up and that's my favorite light for the camera and all that but uh you know, i'm telling we're, we're to be an influence now i'm gonna jump over all the way over in the back to 1 John 4. Boy, I love this Passion Translation. A guy tried to school me the other day about how off it is. And when I got done with him, he was like, oh, 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 You know, what you're not up on, you'll be down on. So just, you know, 
Look, I don't know it all. I'm finding out more and more that I don't know as much as, but I do know something. Here come my geese. You'll hear them in just a second. I got them trained to fly over right during my show. Yeah. One, two, three. Here they come. Here they come. They're flying right over me. Look at here. Look at here. I love it. I love it. The Lord put me in a place out here in the bushes. I got geese. I've had 16 deer in the yard at a time. I've had, I got raccoons eating my cat food in the middle of the night. They're taking a big risk. That cat food's expensive. I got, I got, I've had turkey, wild turkey walk through the yard. I had a wood duck build a nest in this big oak tree. And I'm on. Wow. Hey, I want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out. The word partner is one who takes part with another to do something. And I know a bunch of you want to take part with me to help me do something. What are we doing? We're doing discipling and evangelism. We're doing discipling, especially through prayer, 4.30 every morning of the week, till for about an hour to an hour and a half, Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 1 p.m., we have, we have a bunch of folks praying daily. And the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the Word and equipping. And another thing we're doing is evangel evangelizing just like through this show. And we're reaching people one-on-one -on -one and through meetings. And there's a lot of fruit. And we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. I just don't know we're going to make it if you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The, the, the great fruit, and he's been off of drugs, and he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer, daily in the Word with us, and in growing with a group that loves him. So that's just one of the stories, some of the fruit. There's many more, and we'll share others. Thank you for helping. I know you want to. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.